remote islands, epic coastlines, fish that are willing to eat a popper the size of your forearm. This fishery creates unrivaled excitement, unbelievable heartbreak, and hopefully a true feeling of accomplishment. Welcome to Panama, the land of the giants. So appreciative of this fish, so appreciative of this fishery and this trip. When it's a grind and you come together and something like this happens, it makes all of the grinding, all of the misery worth it. Good morning, boys. Good morning, everyone, boys and girls. Victor. Boys and girls, very important. We are leaving the lodge, got all the rods loaded up on top of the truck. We're sitting in the back with the gear, the other crew, all the Peruvians, they're sitting in the truck. Uh, they make the Americans sit in the back here, I today, guess. Uh, today is an important is. day. Yeah, today is very important. We got Team USA holding it down in the back. We got a friendly competition going on. We wagered 60 bucks for the biggest fish. Hopefully today, when we hook the one good fish of the day, it stays button. Oh, <coughs> cough, cough, Ryan. Yeah, just, someone needs to teach me how to fish. Do you guys know anyone good that could teach I, me? I, I know this guy, Lance Shark. He's got some sister. Nah, that guy YouTube. sucks. <laughs> Always talking to someone. <laughs> <laughs> you got Probably no one in this town. And now we pull up to the beach. So all of the, the fishing boats are out there. The furthest ones in the water. We're gonna hop in a little pango with all our gear and bring us out there because there are no marinas, there are no uh, inlets and stuff here. We just got a beach, we got a panga, and we got a bunch of super fishermen that just want to get out there and catch some fish. Why are you insulting us already? Maybe I we're mean, smart fishermen. You? I don't know. Scott, yeah. yes. I you, maybe not. Bien. Good morning, Pierre. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Team small fish, team big fish. Adios. <laughs> Okay, first drop, just drop down this first spot we're at. Eduardo told us to start jigging. So here we are. First oh, fish Mackerel. of the trip. Yeah? Sierra oh, Mackerel. same. Yep. Dos. Sierra. Here, let's actually get this going now. Will you film this, Scott? Yeah. This thing's freaked out. All right, I'm gonna flip him in the boat right where you are, Vic. Literally right where you are. You! Dude, that is sweet. That is a big Panamanian Sierra mackerel. Very similar to our Spanish mackerel. Gorgeous double with my bro, Victor. First double, first fish from me in Panama. Super stoked. We both hooked up at the exact same time, so school must have went through. And my fish didn't do much until I got him right next to the boat, and then I was like trying to flip him in, and he freaked out, and it just started ripping. But super cool, super stoked. We're gonna get these guys on, uh, get these guys in the fish box, and uh, we're gonna eat them tonight for sure. Dude, are you excited? You I'm never fired had, up. You never had Sierra Mac. They're, they're I delicious. Yeah, I'm excited. They're Scott good. and Scott and Victor said they're both really good. Uh huh. Yeah. Not small. Professional, uh -huh. professional. <laughs> Soon as we drop down my leader, I started with 80 because there's a possibility that you can run into some absolute monster fish um, that can bring you into some structure. But right now, I dropped down to 50 and I got some type of tuna. Bonita. Yeah, def definitely some type of bonita fish that is flared. No, high in the water column. I looked at all the marks and I was like, Definitely want to throw a jig up into that. Get tight. Get morale. A nice morale boosting fish. How's morale, Scott? Give me a one out of ten. Uh, it's probably like an eight. A eight? That's pretty good. I eleven. I'm gonna go with a seven because like catching a Kibera or something like is definitely gonna raise it. Yeah, eleven is like eight. Eight is good. 
Nice. Perfecto. Big Cubera. <laughs> For the first time this trip, I'm gonna throw a big popper. This thing is massive. Giant hooks, big heavy rod, 100 pound leader, 65 pound braid. We're gonna throw some water, hopefully raise some big critters. Drags have to be really tight because one of the target species is Cubera snapper. And they will take you right down to the wreck and break you off. So we're trying to make a whole bunch of commotion right now with this big popper. Get stuff interested that might be, you know, halfway suspended. Some, uh, you know, cabaras or rooster fish that are sitting there looking at the bonitas and runners that are around us that we have been catching. They like to eat those bigger baits. And it's going to come up and check out this big popper. What are your thoughts on a cabara being 100 feet down and coming all the way up? I think it could, but I think most of those fish that you're going to get on a popper were already halfway in the water column. Oh. I think when they hunt, they do suspend a lot. Sure that. When they eat yeah. That out. What you got, Vic? What is that called? Um, I'm not really sure. They call it a red snapper, but basically everything down here is a pargo. Yeah. I don't know what kind it is, but if you guys look back home, like Ryan's filmed red snapper videos for you guys, this one's got like bars on them. Yeah, you that looks that? sick. Doesn't he look? That looks super beautiful? cool. And we get to eat them. That's the best part. Hell yeah. That's sick. I'm stoked. Scott just hooked something good on the jig. Well, That's it's pulling a lot of drag. He hooked it and it literally shot up to the surface. Yeah. It was hard to catch up to him in the beginning. I don't think he's huge, but... I mean, it's pulling some drag, which is good. Decent. Oh, yeah. Tuna tuna spins? Or a giant bonita. Could just be a giant bonita, dude. He's right there. Can you take another crank? Yellowfin. Yellowfin? Oh, yeah. Oh. Yellowfin. Species number six. Oh, yeah. Pretty fish. Open. Open. No, 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 no. Not open. Do you? Oh. Let's go. That's Come on, cool. man. Yellowfin on a jig? Definitely. Yeah, that's yeah. definitely a smaller one for Panama, but it still is a delicious fish. Oh, yeah. Hey, on a jig, right on the bottom, I think second crank. Didn't feel like much at first because he shot up probably 40 feet instantly, but caught up to him and he brought pretty good. So Scott has not been catching much this morning and now he's just like the only person catching anything. He just popped three bonita in a row in the first yellowfin of the trip. Yeah, it's gonna come and go in little <laughs> hot streaks. I didn't start hot, but catching up now. Well, we had to teach you how to use your left hand on a rod and reel. Yes. <laughs> he's literally suffering with the wrong-handed uh, jigging setup right I'm now. I'm one dimensional. But anyways, <laughs> nice fish. Gonna be good sushi later. You guys didn't catch one yellowfin your last trip, did you? We got one. Yeah, no, got, we got I got a one on a pop. Okay. We got a couple. We caught a couple small ones. Here, what 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 do you like about slow pitch jigging, Ryan? You can flip it around. What do you like about this whole artificial lure game? Well, we always loved high speed jigging, but here's the thing: like, no matter how good a shape you're in, you high speed jig for like six drops, you're tired. Like, you're over it, and you can't fish all day doing that, and you can't fish so many spots, and just keep yourself in the game and keep yourself motivated. You're gonna take a lot of breaks, and you're not gonna spend time on the water. So, it allows you to just keep fishing all day, and uh, you know, present the jig in a lot of good ways, and not completely kill yourself. So, you're ready to fight that monster when you do hook them. So, it's pretty good. I I, th I think certain situations they do like that flutter, that presentation of the slow pitch jig, as opposed to like the traditional speed jig, vertical jig. All right, we moved into a solid looking popping location. Tell me this doesn't look epic to you guys. Giant rock structure, structure sticking out. All of this whitewash here, you gotta expect there's gonna be rooster fish, there's gonna be cuberas, big critters. The Pacific Jack Creval. And that popper, I'm just gonna pop the ever-living shit out of it. 
trying to get some stuff to rise up. Because you got to think all this noise and everything like that, these fish need to be able to find this thing. Scott just hooked the trophy fish of the trip right here. I agree. A massive four man's billfish. Oh my God. I would honestly rather catch this than most other oh, fish species here. This thing's just insane. <laughs> this, this is, is as good as it gets. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm like not even joking. <laughs> Wait till you see this fish. The, the hound fish over here get absolutely huge. I backed up on the drag a little bit. Yeah. Is that big? Dude, things like... feet. <laughs> so he's as tall as Vic. Yeah, he's big. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you said flip him in. Flip him? Or no, I think no. he's gonna put it behind you. Fish. Fish. Okay. That's a, uh, that is a grown one. That is a freaking beast. Wow. <laughs> oh, so Grande. It <laughs> Massive houndfish, needlefish, whichever it is. Probably a little over 10 pounds, maybe five feet. Not our target, but super welcomed. I was just saying we hadn't seen one of these things today and big one in the first cast. Dude, look at his teeth. His teeth are literally green. The only thing about these guys is they don't release very well, so we'll see what happens here. We already asked Eduardo and he said no nope. comer, so <laughs> we're gonna give it a shot. Ready? Yep. Let's go, son. Oh my God. That happened so fast. You're on. That happened so freaking fast. <sighs> Something came up. Oh my God, off right there. No, oh. Oh. oh my God. What's dude. going through your head, dude? Giant fish came up on the popper. You can see the freaking teeth marks in it. Okay, let me see. Pop popped it once. <sighs> Came back, I kept working the popper, kept working the popper. He came up and crushed it. I set him three or four times. I was tight with him. And the hooks just ripped out. Take your mask down. That's uh, wow. God, this fish has hammered the popper. They're so powerful, so big. But I guess he just didn't get a good hook set. It sucks, I hit him three or four times. Like I was him setting him. Dude. He was tight. Ryan, I can tell you one thing. Yeah. I raised four Kuberas last trip. I didn't hook a single one, so you're doing four times as good as we did last time. Well, I don't feel like it right now. No, dude, that was good. That's you, depressing. You got him to eat. Yeah. Oh my gosh. He sat behind that for a long time. Yeah. Well, Probably he kept- 10, 15 seconds. They yeah, never did I, that for and us. And I kept popping, kept popping, and I thought it was gone, and then he just ambushed it. You buy plane tickets months in advance. You buy gear, you spool your rods, you talk about what you're gonna do the whole time. And it all comes down to one moment when one fish is coming up on this giant lure. You see the fish come up behind it. And man, like I watched him come up behind it, which was likely a bigger fish. Our guide Eduardo said likely two fish came up on this. Bigger fish initially swirled it and I kept popping it, kept popping it, kept popping it. And then we're like, ah, he's gone. Nothing really happened. So I popped it hard twice. And then what we think was a smaller Kibera came up and just absolutely annihilated this thing. And we're showing a bit of the teeth marks right now. These fish are so mean, but they're bottom fish. So for them to come up and be able to get a popper is very, very difficult. And definitely one of the pinnacles um, in sport fishing, I would say. Those absolute monster fish. And I was straight up like, I definitely had a lot of adrenaline in my body after losing that fish because I'm sitting there and my like legs are like shaking a little bit because you spend so much time thinking about that exact moment and uh, you know I don't necessarily think I did anything wrong I just think the you know the, the, hook, the hooks didn't stick the fish too well and the fish came off and that's it's part of fishing but uh, got to keep casting got a couple more days a couple more shots hopefully just got to get get back after them. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, let's go, Vic. Woo! Big rooster. 
Dude! No say. No, Let's I, go. No, it yeah. was it was very subtle. Yep. It was very, very subtle. Silver, I think. Yeah, it was silver. I don't think it's a Kubera. It's not it's not a Kubera. No. It's probably a rooster. Too. Yeah, I think it is a rooster. I am, I am. Scott, you're good. I'm good? Yeah. Poor Jack. We don't care, dude. It's no. pulling drag. Riding good? Yep. You're on. They changed direction. Oh, 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 oh! Rooster? I don't know. I don't know. Dude, that was so sick. Such a good eat. <laughs> that was so sick. I think this is going to be a jack. Uh, it's like a 20 pound jack. I think it's the same. That's okay. I'll take those things. I will too. This is a very interesting. He's got some deformity. Yeah. I don't know what's going that on. That's interesting looking. His belly looks like it's a little bit too short for that anal part of him, but it's all double with my boy Scott right here. Some good top water flops. There. Yeah, dude. I mean, your fish ate like 10 feet from the boat, which is just so exciting. Absolutely. That's, that's why this fishery is so much fun is because it's so visual and you get to just see everything, you know? It's the fish you target are just, just changing so yeah. constantly. I mean, Already today, eight caught, species. Yeah, it's incredible. And go. I'm going to dive them like yep, this, ready? Me too. Best way, I think, to release these guys straight head first. Five of them. Less than nice. ideal. Nine out of ten, six out of ten. But your angling skills are ten out of ten. What about the hype level? Ten out of ten. Toss swirl. Damn, it was big. Almost had a brown look. Oh, I got a fish on. Oh! oh! Oh my god, dude! That was so sick. Oh. Oh. Dude, popper eats never get old. Never get old. No matter the species, fish eating on top never get old. My god, that was cool. Whew. I think this might be another Jack Cravel. Absolutely gets your heart racing, when, no matter what it is. When a fish comes up and blows up your pop top water, blows up your popper, it's just <laughs> gets you excited as an angler, no matter it, no matter the species. Dude, the, the storm behind you looks oh. so cool. Big jack vibes. Big jack vibes. Oh, flip around. Mm. Not fishing loose drag here because you never know. In all these areas, you can hook cuberas, get a grooster fish, lots. Definitely the land of the uh, giants. Big Jack. Nice Jack. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's no cubera snapper, it's no rooster fish, but I will never turn down the humble Jack Cravel. These fish are definitely different than the ones we have in the Atlantic. They're just shaped, they're a little bit taller, a lot more fat around the anal fin and stuff like that. But they act very similarly. They definitely fight hard. They blow up top waters and when they go for it, they go for it and they get it. Definitely excited to have some action on top waters. Oh. And, you know, it's a little redemption from the Cubera, but we're gonna still try and get our Cubera this trip. It's gonna release this guy. We're gonna shoot him back into the water, head first. Dude. So that, no, that one swam good. <laughs> oh gosh, you're about to get soaked. Look behind you. Oh yeah. <laughs> we had very, very, very good weather all day. Cool, barely drizzled on, but it looks like we might get a little rain here any second. This trip was hosted by Pana Fishing Lodge. The staff was extremely professional. The amenities were perfect, everything you need. Honestly, I really thought we were gonna be roughing it a lot more than we did. Food is prepped for you, cooked for you in the morning, they pack you a lunch, and they provide you dinner. Just an awesome place, and I highly recommend it. Check them out if this is a trip that you'd be interested in. It's actually much more affordable than you might think. I have everything linked in the description below. So when you get back to the lodge, typically all the fish that are, uh, you know, table worthy, you're gonna fillet them up right here. We got Vic about to fillet up some fish. That's just because he loves filleting fish. You don't have to fillet your own, the staff will do it here. Yeah, a little Amico action. And then, show you guys around the lodge here. 
So you got the kitchen, the wonderful staff working hard on dinner back there. Absolutely crushing it. Enjoy some appetizers and everything like that. And I'll show you guys around the rest of the lodge. This is where, you know, all the fishing stories happen, you know, late night drinks and stuff like that. And then if it's a really hot day, you can take a nice dip in the pool. I'm probably gonna do that in a little bit. Hang out here, just on the couches and everything. This lodge is kind of like in the middle of nowhere. There's, you know, not much. You kind of feel like you're in the rainforest at a lot of times. Sometimes it's raining a lot, sometimes it's not. But it's pretty nice, guys. Like, you know, I honestly never expected I would be at a place like this, doing things like this around other fishermen. There's a, you know, another group here. Typically this place holds up to three groups of three. There's only two groups of three here, including, um, you know, including our group. But just awesome, beautiful. Nice accommodations, AC. Don't mind the mess because we're a little messy, messy things. But three beds, little AC unit, keeps us nice and comfortable. And we can keep all our camera gear and everything like that. But just a stellar lodge. Super soaked to be here and catch those fish that we caught today. Still a little bit of heartbroken on that Cubera, but we got three more days of fishing. So absolutely want to get a big Cubera and really want to get a big rooster fish. It's just a fish that's, uh, you know, I've always dreamed of catching. So. I'm gonna show you guys the rod and reel combos that we're using. All three of us and pretty much everyone that fishes here has three standard rod and reel combos that they go with. So primarily, the first one is a heavy popping setup. So this is an Ocean's Legacy Aggressor, eight foot rated for around an 80 to 170 gram popper. So big poppers like this Hero Kubera right here. 150, some 4X strong treble hooks on it. This thing's gonna make a ton of wake and attract some big fish. This is very similar to the popper that I got eight on earlier today by that Cubera. You know, this thing's gonna pop. There's gonna be a bunch of commotion and a fish is gonna rush in to see what's going on and then they're just gonna see this popper sitting there and they're gonna crush it. Throwing these big poppers, you need a big stiff rod, so that's why this is such a you know heavy setup. And then you're also fishing for world class, you know, could be you know, fish of a lifetime. So you want a very, very heavy setup. 65 pound braid on mine. A lot of guys fish 80. I know Vic fishes 80 and then a hundred pound leader. A lighter popping setup, but just slightly though. So you're fishing a smaller grade popper that you can typically work faster. Ideally for something like a rooster fish or something like that. We caught those big jacks on these today. But in this combo, this is the Ocean's Legacy Focal, seven foot eight, honestly one of my favorite all around rods. Caught a bunch of fish in Florida on this rod. Um, it's rated for like 40 to 100 gram jigs definitely a good one to just fish 50 pound braid on just like i'm fishing here 80 pound liter on this uh 10k saltiga and i don't know if you guys like this i swapped out the handle on this bad boy big fan of the gold handle but uh that's just because i'm a little extra. lastly is something that vic and i are getting very very comfortable with these days and that's slow pitch jigging so this is a new setup for me a osha jigger 2001 left-handed i like fishing all my my uh Slow pitch rods and reels left-handed. Fishing 30 pound spider wire on there, that breaks at like 40, 50 pounds. It's really, really heavy. The drag is absolutely locked down. It's FG to some 50 pound leader. You're fishing like 12 feet of that. And then my favorite jig this trip has become the Mustad Stagger Bod. This jig catches a lot of fish back in the States and fishing like 150 grams. Um, this isn't the specific one that I had because I was fishing two hooks today, but uh, absolute killer of a jig absolute in the states and in panama so if you guys like me going over the rods and reels and everything like that be sure to like the video it does help the video spread to more people like it i like it you guys should like it i did want to give a quick shout out to the fam over at navalis apparel this is probably the first time that uh one of their shirts has been worn in the country of panama and especially on a country like this but they're a big sponsor of the channel so go check them out guys my code ryan20 will save you 20 percent off All right, first fish of day two came on the slow pitch. Not a massive fish by any means, but I already got hammered once. And this is my second bite. I actually hooked this one. Dude, I got bit too while you hooked up. Did you? I yeah, we're well, getting bit around the same time. Maybe a jack or something like that. Let's see. Oh, uh, snapper. You know. Yellow, that's, Ooh. They call that a yellowtail snapper here. That's amazing. Bien. 
Beautiful. My first, I would say, cool fish of the trip. This is, um, they call him a yellowtail snapper here. Um, very different than our yellowtail, much more similar to like a dog snapper in the United States, but just an awesome fish, man. Smoked the jig, fishing uh, Mustad Staggerbod, 150 gram jig, a couple single, or a couple of assist hooks on there. Just very, very cool. Very similar in mouth to like a mangrove, I would say. And we get to eat this fish, which is super cool. Stoked. Have you guys caught one of these before? No. In Colombia. In Colombia? Not here? Sick. Well, hopefully let's get on some more. Big fish. Big fish. Big fish. Big fish. Oh. Come on. This fish took peeled some drag. I got this reel locked down as tight as it'll go. There we go. Gaining some line back. There we go. Got it. Oh my god. That'll get your heart racing. Big, big fish, pulling some good drag. Now we got him off the bottom a little bit. Oh, pulling drag again. Whew. It has been a grind today, y'all. It has been quite a grind. A lot of rain. Morale has been quite low, I think we could say. That's not a snapper. Eduardo doesn't think so. No? I think jack type. Emberjack, that's what I was thinking. Oh. Big Almaco, big Emberjack. Okay. It ate it too high for me to think it was a broomtail. Oh. Come on, one up, buddy. Come on up. Boost some, boost some group morale. Amberjack, senor. Amico? Amico, yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So that is definitely the biggest Almaco jack I've ever seen. I guess from what Scott was telling me, these fish are like inverse from, uh, you know, the United States where the United States are small ones are Almacos, our big ones are AJs. Apparently here their big ones are Almacos and their small ones are AJs, but Definitely a nice fish on the jig, smoked it. I hate to see what one uh, twice this size would do to me because this fish pulled good, man. Pulled really, really good. Oh, nice to get something in the boat. That rain and uh, no bites will definitely take it out of you in terms of uh, the group morale, but hopefully we can get into some more of these guys. Maybe hook a big group broom tail or something like that. Ready? Mm -hmm. Release it. Oh my gosh. Well, that was less than ideal. I like to, like to head dive them, but he shook at the last second. But those fish swim off. They're very hardy, very strong. Let's get a bigger one now. Keep things button, boys. That's how it was. Oh, 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 what is it? A rooster. It's a rooster. What is it? A rooster. It's a rooster. Still on? Yeah. Rooster. Hey, he did well. Big rooster. Tight drag, good? See, see, see. That's oh, okay. No loosen? No. Okay. Tranquilo. Okay. My heart is racing, absolutely racing. Oh my God, oh my God, so epic. Victor had a giant blow up just before this, got tight for a second and the fish came off. This fish hammered my popper right off the front of the boat. No hesitation, just absolutely came up and cracked it. It's a big rooster. Oh my God, my heart's racing. God, that's crazy. Whew. That's a big fish. 
Tranquilo, tranquilo. <laughs> I saw it go Dude, down. It was, it was so aggressive. No, no All right, I'm coming your way. Looks like we're popping the rest of the day, huh? Yeah. Big one, dude. Crazy, dude. So crazy. Oh, uh, we got color. Oh, another one with him. Ultra. Really? Another? Ultra rooster. Same size. God, I'm not recording with my hat, right? Oh my god. Uh, no. No. Oh, dude! Dude! Oh dude. my god. Oh my So <laughs> sick. Oh, you got your camera for photos? You should get that ready. Right away? Yeah. Because these things do not last long, I'm telling you. Muy bien. ¿Yo? Gracias. Uh -huh. <laughs> Any attack the big fish sí. here. Sí. Okay. God, that's so oh. crazy. Monster rooster fish. He hit you? Sí. Holy shit. Yeah, Dude, the power yes. just flew. Click. Caput. Yeah. Woo. Danger. Sí. Crazy. Look at him, hey, teach you. Teach you. Picture. Just awesome guys, just awesome. Fish of a lifetime on a popper with the boys on a grind of a day. And that just brought it all together. That made traveling all the way out here, doing all that work, all worth it. It's okay, it's okay. We can get some water on this fish, keep them healthy. So appreciative of this fish. So appreciative of this fishery and this trip. When it's a grind and you come together and something like this happens, it makes all of the grinding, all of the misery worth it. Just awesome, okay. Okay. Yeah, you can talk about These fish okay. are amazing. They come up and just crush that popper on top. So aggressive. The fight was very fast where the fish is moving constantly, freaking out, trying to change directions. Similar to, you know, tuna species, but then also kind of like a jack-like in that, that matter too. Oh, yeah. So much adrenaline. Heart's absolutely racing because you think about fish like this, you know, your whole life and you see them on TV as kids and you almost never think that you're going to have a chance to do something like this. Oh. That's a fish, Brian, the fish of a lifetime. I w it is. <laughs> so crazy, dude. That's epic. Good? Yeah. Hang on, hang on. Okay. Oh. Thanks, Lilo. Really? Yeah. Fish. They do take a bit of time to revive these guys. It's a hard fight and everything like that. And we want to take our time to make sure that we, uh, you know, get them right. Force Woo! them down. Muy bien. Gracias. Señor Gracias. <laughs> My man. Wouldn't want to do it with anyone else. Yeah. Man, man, Vic yeah, behind the camera but they're very top heavy. They're very dense on the top of themselves, so they're very difficult to hold. But y'all, imagine throwing this thing for like, I don't know, yesterday I threw one of these for probably six hours. Today I've thrown for like three or four hours and you get one to two bites, it seems like, and it's just, it happens so fast, it happens so rapidly and it's so chaotic when it does happen. Just, I'm honestly speechless to tell you guys the truth because it's just, it's something that you see on like a kid on TV when you're growing up and you don't even think that you're ever gonna be able to get to come to another country and fish for fish like that. 
to have it actually happen is just surreal. So it's awesome. Super appreciative of it. Fired up. Our morale was very low today with all of the rain and the bite had been pretty slow, but we've had in the past like hour, probably more action than we had the, all the rest of the day. And it's all been on giant poppers. Victor hooked a fish right before me. Could have been another giant rooster. We've seen something before I caught that rooster that was likely like an 80 pound amberjack came up on my popper. So this is definitely the land of the giants. Man, I'm excited. I'm excited to hook another one and uh, hopefully excited for the boys to hook another one too. Scott, you lost one too. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think the one I lost was like that though. No. What an epic fish, dude. Congrats, Ridiculous. Ryan. That's that's yeah. a, that's a hell of a fish yeah. on on artificial too. Yeah, and that fish like so you're fishing ridiculous amounts of drag here for these cubaros. That fish was ripping easily 25 pounds of drag. They are strong when they want to be like anything else. <sighs> Stoked. really never know what's gonna happen after losing that massive cubera y'all honestly i felt like i was at rock bottom and then as quick as that cubera was off something other something crazy happened and that was catching that massive rooster fish a literal fish of the lifetime i honestly was at a loss for worse than i caught it and i'm right now i'm still at a loss for worse just an epic experience in an epic location with some amazing people so thank you guys so much for watching today's video and for some back home action i want you guys to go ahead and check out this video right here catching some absolutely monster fish off of the pier on artificial just like this i'll see you guys over there